It's such a pleasure to be speaking to you all. Kyle, uh, this film is just like the moment that so many Gohan fans have been waiting for. And I feel like it wouldn't be nearly as satisfying if it wasn't for all the previous setbacks. We finally get to see him like live up to his full potential and it's just phenomenal. How fulfilling was it getting to go all out and show, you know, just Gohan at his peak? I think I think you nailed it in just the setup of that question. You know, having the obstacles makes the victory all the sweeter. You know, um, I've been waiting literally decades since I recorded the the Majin Buu saga, and as much fun and 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 thrill as I've had playing the character through all these different iterations as a father, as a fake superhero, as, <laughs> as you know, um, all those sort of things to get to have this opportunity to make Gohan great again. That's uh, that's that's icing on the cake right there. It's been a long time coming. The fans have told me that I felt it. Uh, it was, too. And I felt it was a matter of time. I didn't know when it was going to happen. But uh, what an absolute treat. What a delight, man. We should have had make Gohan great again. T-shirts made for the for me. Really- <laughs> True facts. <laughs> True facts. That would have been awesome. And Chris, you know, a lot of fans view Piccolo as Gohan's real father figure. And this movie really focuses on the bond between them. How do you view that? Because, uh, you know, some see it as a sensei student relationship, but I can't think of many senseis that pick up their students' children from preschool. You know? <laughs> I think you you nailed it right there. Like, it's very, very clear that Piccolo means a lot to Gohan's entire family. And we know Piccolo well enough to know that he wouldn't be doing the things he does for Gohan and Videl and Pan if he didn't feel the same way. Um, he lo- It's clear he loves their family. He knows them so well. And the sort of things that he gets away with in this film are the things you can't do to somebody unless you are very, very sure that you have a very close relationship with them because uh, Piccolo's methods have always been a little bit questionable, even back in the days like where Gohan was training in the woods. This one was also, you know, almost crossing a line. They love to do these things that could go terribly wrong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a beautiful moment for Piccolo. I love that he's that Piccolo is forced to have to carry this movie in a way that he's never had to before. He had like, and it it's clear he goes through his entire Rolodex of things to help him before he realizes like this is all on him. And this is all on on Gohan. And I love the moments where Piccolo will turn to the camera, like literally turn to the audience and go like, yes, Gohan's back. And I think everyone feels it at that moment, too. Yeah, it's 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 a bit strange, Sean, to see Goku like not purely in the spotlight. He still has a lot of great moments, but he's off training while his whole family is like saving the world. It's you have some great comedic moments in the film, but what is it like just not being like the main character this time around? It's very, very uh, comfortable Um, (laughs) sense of relief and uh, uh, and pride. I I you know, I don't think about when I'm playing Goku. uh, I don't think that I'm I don't think from the perspective of, you know, I'm the lead in carrying the show. It's to me, it's an ensemble cast. However, when you're suddenly not the lead and not having to carry a lot of the scenes, you realize that you were, and then you start looking at the other people who are taking those parts, you know, in, in those roles in terms of being the focus, Gohan, Piccolo, et cetera. And then you're, you're hoping, you know, you're want, you're wanting them to please don't fuck this up. Cause I've done it before. Right. And then they went ahead and just killed it. I've told several other news outlets. I think this might be the best of we've ever done. And so as the new cast members are killing it. The, the, the legacy, Chris and Kyle are just, killing it and and i mean i'm look i can be very judgmental of art and nobody let me down uh and and actually kyle blew my mind so did chris and so i I, and that's hard to do because i've known these guys 20 years so you know i know i'm very familiar with a lot of their work so for them to make my my eyebrows raise was in this performance was very gratifying for me and surprising not that i didn't think they'd do great but to take it to that level and make me go Oh shit. Yeah. You're filling that void fantastically. Like the void of Goku and Vegeta not being the focus, um, which is really thrilling for me. So I, I, I'm excited that I have enough a part in the film that I get to be a part of it, but really I'm just eating popcorn, watching everything. You know what I mean? Uh, in reality and, and in the fantasy. So it's, it was extremely exciting to see that it makes me very happy and proud. 
Awesome. And Kyle, Gohan's daughter Pan plays such a big role here. And yeah. the film sort of like turns any thoughts of like him being a family man as a detriment just isn't true. And he's just made more powerful because of the connection he has with his friends and family. Can you just speak to that element? Because uh, I thought it was a great message. Family, I think, is at the core uh, of what's going on with all these characters that are so well represented and and built up over the the course of the years in the entire arc of the entire franchise and uh, to see that uh of course acknowledged and uh taken to the next level you know it's important it's a natural progression and it's great to see and chris you know vegeta's seen like meditating which i never thought he'd be doing but he's very like into like uh figuring out how to be more efficient in battle and it's goku's like what are you doing you're just sitting on a rock and it's just such a difference between them (laughs) so like what did you like most about vegeta's uh scenes in the film because they're pretty sparse but they're they're like very distinct and huge for the character 100 percent. i should just steal all your questions as my answers because you always do (laughs) such a good job of explaining it the um there vegeta's like I, it is remarkable to me that that Vegeta has become such a such has become a, such a thoughtful fighter, and this movie is definitely an example of kind of what his kind of progress is. Um, you know, for the longest time, for the longest time, we always thought like you know uh, Goku is literally training to be the angel, and and Goku is training to be the destroyer. But like with this much peace and this much kind of uh, meditation in his mind it's really impressive to see kind of what his next step is going to be he's akira toriyama has done a wonderful job of just making these characters evolve so much i and i mentioned earlier i love how annoyed goku gets at vegeta for actually focusing for once and it's it's like and it, remind, it does remind me of sean sometimes where he's like chris come on man let's go do something weird yeah, yeah. let's go do something weird. what are you doing just chilling why are you working right now yeah, yeah let's go do something yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's remarkable where these characters are going. And, and Vegeta, while he may not have um, he may not have as much screen time as some of the other characters, he and Goku clearly steal the end of that film for in 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 the most hysterical way. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic moment. And Sean, it's just very on brand for Goku to bring Broly and all of his pals on the Barris's planet. Uh, can you speak to just his? <laughs> willingness to forgive and see the best in people because like it's still such a unique well, uh, like aspect in anime well you say forgive and see the best in people but really what it is which you know that's a fair assessment but really what it is 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 goku is like quagmire but instead of for ladies it's for fighting and so he's bringing <laughs> the ladies as it were broly to the planet because he wants more good fighting um so i don't know if it's about forgiveness and openness as much as it is that guy's strong i want to fight him let's bring him and he doesn't give a shit about like he brought cell to king kai's planet and they blew up king kai's like nah! right and <laughs> so goku i hate to use this phrase but uh or this word but I don't know. We'll, we'll say absent-minded versus selfish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Oh wait, I was just thinking. I'm not flipping you off. It's the blurring. I'm not. I'm just using my finger. <laughs> you off, and the blurring is. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm not flipping you off. But yeah, it, 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 Goku is look, the end game for Goku. Is am I fighting someone strong today? That's the end game for Goku. So while I appreciate you casting positive uh, forgiveness and stuff onto Goku, I, I have a hard time. For believing that that's true <laughs> yeah that definitely makes more sense and uh that's about it for my time but thank you guys all for you know doing this interview and the film's really fantastic i think it's my favorite dragon ball movie yet i agree dude i think that's it's good to I, hear that i think it, that's great to hear and, and i and i think you're really gonna love the dub i think it, again it, it might be the very best dub we've ever done chris dr- chris directed it and he, he knocked it out of the park so um i can't wait for you to see the dub man mm-hmm. great work everybody thank you guys Thank you. Take care, man.